Today we're going to show you how to field strip and properly clean the Sig Sauer SP-2022. The SP-2022 was developed for French law enforcement and was brought to market for their use in 2002 and it had a predicted service life of 20 years and that's where the 2022 comes from. Uh, the SP stands for Sig Pro, so it's part of the Sig Pro pistol series here. Um, and like I said, developed for French law enforcement, but it's become extremely popular here in the United States. It's similar to the uh, P226 that SIG makes, which is another really popular pistol, but it's a little bit lighter due to the polymer frame, whereas the 226 has the steel frame. For now, we're going to turn this over to Chase, and he's going to show us how to take it apart and properly clean it. Yeah, we're going to show you how to do a proper... Uh field strip and cleaning of the Sig Sauer SP2022. So first thing we want to do is make sure that the the gun itself is safe and ready to take down. What you want to do is of course take out the magazine, make sure that there are no rounds inside the magazine, and open up that slide and make sure there is no no cartridge in the gun itself. So this gun is ready to take down. Uh, it's relatively simple. Okay, basically your slide catch okay, is also your takedown pin. What you want to do is there's this little rectangular notch right here in, towards the front of the slide that you need to line up with the pin side of your slide catch. Okay, and on the other side, it literally is just a pin. You just need to push it through. It even almost looks like a little finger indent so you can just push it through with your finger but you just line that up push on through and it will come right out for you with that then you just take your slide and your frame apart so we're, we're going to start off with the slide okay you want to take off your recoil spring and your guide rod okay you can just set those off to the side then go ahead and push up on that barrel from the injection port and take that barrel out at an angle. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna work on the barrel. Um, what we wanna do is get some gun cleaner in there uh, to help break up a lot of that powder that's been sitting inside the barrel. Uh, we use here uh, Hobby's Elite Gun Cleaner. Uh, it's a great product. Um, so what we're gonna do is I could just use this little lead right here, um, or a simpler way would be just to take the brush that you're using and wrap your cleaning swab around your brush okay that that way you're only using one cleaning rod uh, just saves a little bit of time it's not really necessary to always use that lead but go ahead and spray oop, spray a little bit of that gun cleaner on there and I'm gonna go in through the bore side of the barrel as you can see I'm leaving the front end alone I, even though this cleaning rod is brass, I don't want to nick that the crown or basically where the rifling ends in your barrel because then that will affect your accuracy. Uh, but of course, just want to do one little run through of this. That way we can get the inside of the barrel coated. And then I'm going to take this same swab with that gun cleaner and I'm going to just address my feed ramp and all around the bore side of the barrel. Okay, Feed ramp, of course, is very important to clean and even just around this part of the barrel because you don't want your gun well the rounds getting stuck when they're trying to go into battery but we're gonna let this sit okay you should usually let this sit for about 10-15 minutes I'm just gonna let it sit for just a little bit now that way we can show you what other things to address while cleaning when it comes to the slide there's a couple areas that you want to uh, go over uh, I just use a nylon brush, okay, you can even use a toothbrush. I know I've said this in most of my videos, but it is true, okay, you don't have to go out and buy some expensive gun cleaning parts in order to clean your gun. Um, but of course, what we're going to do is spray a little bit on our nylon brush and go over our slide grooves, okay, this is the point of friction, and also this is a place where um, a lot of that uh, powder fouling, which is just excess powder or un unused powder from around. Just want to go get in there and scrub it a little bit. Even so, the bottom of your bolt, okay, this will also need a little bit of attention. Not too much, though. And then also your bolt face, okay. 
Um, this, what I'll do, what I usually do is I turn upside down because I don't want to get any of the solution inside of the firing pin mechanism. So, but you definitely want to scrub in the bolt face. Okay. Even so, this is also where your extractor is. And if that gets gunked up and it starts pulling off to the side a little too much, it's not going to eject your rounds properly. So definitely just give that a nice little scrub. And also, uh, I usually try to address where the barrel meets the slide. Um, it is very important to get that. And any other little difficult area. There's a little, some recesses, like, uh, well, I shouldn't say recess, but little holes down in here that you might want to get some of this cleaning solution in. Uh, just so, you know, none of that powder ends up sticking in there. If you leave that, uh, that grime and that powder in there for a long time, it will actually adhere to the gun. And you don't really, really want that happening. Um, another thing to clean would be your recoil spring. Um, the guide rod here is polymer, okay? So it, this will just wipe down towards the end, but this spring is metal. So I'm just going to take one of my cleaning slobs, some of the cleaning solution, just a little spray, and I'm going to go over this spring. And actually I can see bits of powder and everything on here, and I'll actually need to do, um, do this with a brush. Because I can't get my fingers in between a spring and I don't want to compromise its tension. So, again, this is why having a little brush is important. That way you can get in all little kind of nooks and crannies. And once you get that a little coated, you can just set that off to the side. Now I still have a little bit on my brush, and it is always good to address uh, your frame, okay? These little metal parts in here will get gunked up. So just going over this with a little bit of this cleaner, get those slide rails, all the partial slide rails that are right here. Even use this other end of the brush, okay? Again, this powder and all that will get everywhere in your gun. So it is important to make sure that you go over each little part. Now, of course, you could do a full takedown of this firearm, but just for uh, simple cleaning purposes, we're just going to do a simple field strip. But once we have that all coated, we're just going to let that sit for a second. And uh, I want to address with you, um, not only would you want to clean your gun, and I've said this in other videos too, but you also want to clean your magazine. Uh, this one takes a little bit more time to take apart, so I'm not going to do it for this video. But um, I will, if you uh, there's any kind of questions, of course, always give us a call here, and we'll tell you how to take apart your magazine, and so you can clean it properly. But this has been sitting, so what we're going to do is we're just going to brush it up a little bit. Okay, get the rest of that powder out of there. I'm going to take my brush, 9mm brush of course. It's a 9mm chambered gun. And I'm just going to scrub this out just a couple of times. Again, um, if you have let your gun sit for a long time and you just continually shoot it without cleaning it, you will probably have to repeat these steps uh, a couple of times. But if you clean your gun each time you go out to the range, then you should have no problem just, you know, getting through this quite quickly. But now that we've kind of scrubbed out the barrel, I'm going to take a swab and get any of that excess powder and that cleaning agent that's been sitting in there. Now, as you can see, that's what's been sitting in the barrel. You don't want that. It'll end up affecting your accuracy and then compromise the gun altogether. Now we're just going to go over our slide. Uh, you can use uh, 
Q-tips. You can use a rag if you want to. You can use more of the cleaning swabs. But for the sake of just trying to get really in depth and in those little crevices, I'm going to use one of these Q-tips. I might even need another one. But yeah, we just want to get all that excess, excess cleaner. out of there. Yeah, just go over every spot that you ended up putting any kind of cleaning or oil on. Um, I don't tend to use really too much oil when cleaning. It's not entirely necessary. Um, I've been cleaning guns for, for well, since I was actually a very, very small, small child. And I've, I try to steer away from oil because it actually will attract more dirt and uh, keep a lot of that powder fouling in your gun. Um, it just creates a pool where it can all sit. So I tend not to use it too much. Uh, only to usually coat the gun, just give it a little film so it's a little bit more protected. But now the slide, we've gone over each area, the bolt base underneath the bolt and the slide rails or slide grooves I should say. And then also our recoil spring. Okay, just give this a good wipe down. All right. So now that we've had that all wiped down, just make sure that we also do our frame. Again, it's not going to take too much effort. Just make sure any of that excess stuff is out of there. All right, well, now that we're done with that, this gun is ready to be slightly oiled and then put back together. What I'm going to do first is, of course, I'm going to take just a, one of my little cleaning swabs. And I've been using Balisol for a long time. It is a great oil. And like I said, you don't need that much of it. If you'll watch, I just, one little spray. That's all you need. Okay. This, we're just going to run over the barrel a little bit so that it's protected. Okay, same thing with the slide. Get in those slide, slide grooves. Even do the slide itself. And also, again, any point of friction, like where the barrel meets the slide, Okay, oil that up a little bit, and again, just a little spray, and I'm going to be able to coat this whole gun with just the amount of oil that I put on it at the beginning. Again, it's just to give it a little bit, little bit extra lubrication, but you don't want to put too much on there. And then, of course, like I said, we'll just wipe down this guide rod. Make sure there's no major deposits that are left on it. Which you don't usually have to worry about since it's polymer. Um, of course, I would still always wipe it down. But, again, that was the extent of how much you would have to clean it. But now that everything's clean, oiled up, and ready to go, we're just going to work backwards and put this gun back together. So, of course, I'm going to take my slide. Take your barrel with the barrel lug up, okay? Insert your barrel at an angle and just drop it in. And make sure you push it back so that it seats all the way. Once you do that, reattach your guide rod to your spring. Go ahead and insert it just below the barrel. There's a little space for it. And with this firearm, there's a little notch right in where the barrel lug is, and that's where that little pin on the guide rod goes. So it will seat 
quite well. You don't need to worry about it going off to the side or being not, uh, not where it's supposed to be because it falls right in. But after that, take your frame and your slide. Make sure you line up your slide and your slide grooves. All right. Now, to put this thing back together, I point it down because this barrel, again, is free-floating. So I just want to get it to the point where I can reattach my, my takedown pin, which is also the slide catch. And just look inside of the, where the hole, hole is, because if that barrel is blocking it, it's not going to go in. But you line it up. See, now it's not, now it's not free floating anymore. You just push that pin in and let go of your slide. Now your firearm is clean and ready to go back out to the range. All right, now we're going to go over some additional details for the SIG SP2022. This is an extremely popular firearm here in the United States, but overseas in Europe, there's still about 250,000 of these in circulation. You can find these online or in gun shops here in the United States, so for anywhere from 350 to 550, depending on where you find it, who's got sales going on, um, and it depends on which model you get to. Usually, the flat dark earth with the threaded barrel, those are going to be the higher end ones that are around that $550 mark, whereas one like this where it's just the standard black nitron finish without a threaded barrel, that one's going to be more around that $350 range. Now these are a good balance of price and quality, they're extremely reliable, and you have to remember as we're going through this little review that these were developed for police duty use, so there's some features here that are unique to that. Um, starting up here with the sights, actually, that's a good place to start. Uh, these are heavier duty, uh, higher profile steel sights, so they're not going to get banged up like a plastic sight would. Of course, you can change these out to uh, night sights if you'd prefer to do that. Now, on the 2022, you've only got um, rear slide serrations, and they're not very aggressive, unlike a lot of SIG's other pistols. Um, I don't know what the reasoning is behind that. Um, I don't know if there is any, but uh, and there's no front slide serrations either, which Personally, I prefer front slide serrations on the firearm, but that's just personal preference. Um, this is a double action, single action firearm, and there's no manual external safety on this firearm. The double action uh, trigger system kind of functions as the safety, so that's something to keep in mind. Again, that's a feature that's unique to some uh, service pistols. It does have a firing pin block in there, though, to prevent it from uh, accidentally discharging it if you were to drop it. Now. The finish on the slide, it comes in three different options. You've got the black finish like this. You also have a two-tone stainless finish. And then, as I mentioned previously, the flat dark earth or coyote um, finish that is available on this as well. Uh, now, the flat dark earth would be throughout, including the frame. But the other two, you're going to get the black polymer frame on this. Um, let's bracket back here. So you've got your external extractor, which is typical for SIGs, and then you've also got a loaded chamber indicator up here on top of the slide, which not a huge fan of that, but if you're in a state that requires that for a concealed carry firearm, it's nice to know that you have that on there. Uh, the barrel is about four inches. It's stainless steel as well. And then moving on down to the frame here, you've got your slide stop pin, which Chase showed you in the video. It's similar to how a 1911 slide stop pin works, and that is attached right over here to your slide release lever. Now, for some of you, you may not be used to seeing such a long slide release um, mechanism on the side of a firearm, but again, service pistol, this is extremely easy to manipulate. And that's sending the slide forward. It's really easy, and for me, I don't have to adjust my hand at all to get my thumb onto that slide release. Now, you, the, taking it down can be a little bit tricky, as some people have said that, um, just because it's difficult to get the uh, slide stop pin push through all the way. Now you do have a decocking lever here which takes it up from single action to double action but of course you can decock it traditionally as well just like that with the uh, trigger. Um, again none of this is ambidextrous this is all on the right-handed side so if you're a left-handed shooter that's definitely something to consider. Your magazine release also on the right-handed side it's that nice triangular magazine release that uh, for me has become a favorite. Now you've got the sandpaper-like um, grip texturing here that's typical for SIGs. And also on the polymer frame, you've got a nice Picatinny rail here, which works for just about anything you can attach on there, whether it's a laser, light, or a combination of those. 
um, and it's not specific to any SIG attachments because it's just your standard Picatinny rail. Now, as far as magazines go, the 2022 does come in 9mm and 40 caliber. In 9mm, your standard magazine is going to be a 15 round magazine capacity. In 40 Smith & Wesson, it's going to be 12 rounds, but there are extended magazines available just like this one, which gives us a 17 round plus one in the chamber capacity. I do recommend only using uh, SIG magazines in this, just like you would for anything else, uh, but that choice is yours. Now, interesting little note, going back to the fact that this is a pistol designed for service use, you do have a, a lanyard hole here as well, so you can attach a lanyard to this if you wanted to, which might be an option for you if you were going to use this outdoors, if you were going hiking or something like that. Um, but overall though, the uh, SIG SP2022 with that service life, the 20 year service life that's coming up here soon, um, it's a fantastic firearm at a great price. What you're getting for the price is an extremely reliable, robust, well-built firearm that's proven itself um, both domestically here in the United States and overseas in use by law enforcement agencies in France and then other countries have adopted it as well. So I think uh, for the money and the reliability that you're getting with this firearm, it's a great option at a great price. See more of our videos, just subscribe to our YouTube channel if you found this particular video helpful or know somebody who would, share it with them on social media. When you subscribe to our channel, you're always gonna get more videos on uh, concealed carry best practices, firearms care and maintenance, and how to utilize the full line of urban carry products. That's it for today. Until next time, keep calm and return fire.